your priorities straight. I may well, not hell, be yeah, I may not be a fan of it, but it's I, Ivar's clam chowder too, man. It's the best you can get. Not a fan of shellfish. Mm. More for us. Yeah, more for us. But hey, I could still appreciate. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's not like Guybars only makes clam chowder anyways. They got like Alaska cod and shit too. Roll god. Like one of those things if I ever bring any of you motherfuckers up in the general vicinity of Seattle when I'm not living with my parents anymore, I'm treating y'all. <laughs> But, yes, okay, now that that has alerted me that Jinx is live over there, we'll get started! So when last we left off, you guys walked in on everything being really, really fucked. Well, I say walked in, I'm pretty sure Terrain elbow dropped through a tent mm -hmm. at Mock Justice. As you, one does when you are a Terrain. Yeah, you know, as, as you do when there is justice to be done in Villainy to Smite. <clears throat> you <clears throat> had come upon the four allies from Dragonor who had split off from you to go handle one of the other points that was uh, keeping the big top for this evil carnival locked. As you finished dealing with the second of the two you guys had to handle, you know, after your explosion needed the mimic off the castle... <laughs> You came out to hear just horrified, pure terror-driven screaming over your co over your comms. That cut off with one of them saying, I don't want to go back, and then it was just dead. And when you got here, Roy and Rhea were just laid out on the ground in various states of just fucked. Victoria was like in a ball, hugging herself and like rocking back and forth. Marcus was standing next to her, and there was this just demon thing approaching him but when it tried to touch him he grabbed it by the wrist and then just became the human torch and uh that was bad it was bad on a lot of levels so a very technically one-sided affair began with predominantly you guys trying to deal with the fear demon and also figure out uh Marcus why are you just fire now. <laughs> few of you had the bright ideas of trying to <clears throat> help Dragon Lord, though a few of them managed to wake up from their goddamn failed fear saves. Fear is no joke, man. <laughs> yeah, especially when in the presence of the layer of this fear demon, your fear resistances all drop down a level. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and over the course of the fight, you, <clears throat> with a bit of help, uh, figured, managed to at least puzzle together enough that hitting Marcus is bad. Talking to him and like healing him seemed to be working? Question mark. But even then, he just, like, basically took all the fire off of his body and just immolated this demon just out of existence. You're not even sure if it had a soul, the soul had anywhere to go, because it was just burnt. There's just a sickened, blackened, charred stain on the ground where it was. And then Marcus just passed the fuck right out. As you do when you're so angry, you become fire. <clears throat> and uh, a quiet has sort of settled over the... Uh, interior of what was at one point the freak show for the uh, Sanson and Eckhart World Traveler Circus. <clears throat> so, what y'all doing? Hey, Shiakyo's first question as the adrenaline's wearing off from the fight. I'm gonna look at <laughs> the Dragon Roar crew and point Orzal all in the general direction of Marcus is like, okay, now that the immediate threat has been resolved, can someone please tell me what we just averted? <clears throat> you hear Roy, like, from the back, just like, 
like he's like kind of lean over his like one hand on his knees he's like holds up a finger he's like catch his breath and then <coughs> sorry okay to answer your question uh you know that fear demon we all forgot about when we got on here it took you by surprise uh and then some Cause uh, we prepared. We 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 had means of not be scared, and now this happened, and it was really bad. And uh, hold on a second, he like shakes his head, and like for a second he goes cross-eyed and blinks again and shakes his head. Oh god, I think I fucked my brain up a little bit. Sorry. Ugh. And he just like kind of sits down, then like oh whoa, now I'm dizzy. His sister sort of like <coughs> looks at him, sighs, then wanders over and immediately like checks Marcus's pulse. And just he's breathing. He's out cold, but he's breathing. <coughs> so we went ill prepared and something happened to Marcus. <laughs> Real like not ill prepared. It's more that we didn't anticipate it being able to get around things designed to keep you from getting, you know, supernaturally terrified. Probably. Now did this demon putting you and his guys in a state of fear set off Marcus to such a degree, or did he get it too? Or do we not know? <clears throat> Rhea just, uh, turns. You'd have to ask Roy. I was the first one grabbed. I just look to Roy. <laughs> who Roy I assume like, is still <laughs> catching his breath. He, he's, he's on the guy, he's like got his hands on his head. You could just kind of, if it was a cartoon, you'd see like his eyes like going around and around in circles. Not like a clock, just like around, like they're spinning 180 degrees. <laughs> That's not good. <clears throat> like he, he's like definitely trying to shake something off and he looks, you notice now there's a lot of, um, his wounds all seem to be around his head, like blood vessels on his like skull burst. <clears throat> Which to most of you, or at least Yakio specifically, you just know offhand means psychic damage, a lot of psychic damage. Given, yeah. yeah given so our, you're, given you're our, sure he was... given our opponent and the probably the way the scars are coming about or the injuries. Yeah, no, you can tell like something psychic damage related happened to him. You're not sure what, and he's still like trying to rattle his brain. <clears throat> Victoria. She still uh, got Marcus's coat like draped over her shoulders and she just speaks up. <coughs> when we got in here, she like sort of with her head like motions to the area. There was walls. It wasn't this open. It was structured like a proper building. Started walking through. You know, alert for something to come out at us. Passed by empty exhibits for the and she holds up two she holds up one of her hands to do the air quotes freaks. <clears throat> but as we passed one of the doors I tried to pop the lock, it didn't open. <clears throat> I moved away. <clears throat> and when Rhea attempted to just bash it down, the door opened, something reached out, grabbed her, pulled her in, and then the door shut and disappeared. That's worrisome. Yes. We started looking around again, and when we found the same door but a different place, Marcus went through it, or attempted to, and it just... The door folded like a mimic's mouth and just ate him, and then disappeared. <clears throat> I 
I don't know. I don't remember how it got me. I just know I was looking at Roy and then she like shudders, like her whole body very violently shudders. It was unpleasant. She sort of nudges Roy with her foot a little bit and he's like, holds up one finger. Okay, hold on, I have an idea. And you see him slap himself in the face really hard as he also casts Greater Restoration on his brain. <coughs> and upon doing that, oh, ah, oh, that did it. Oh, I feel so much better now. Okay. Oh, and he stands up again. So we got Victoria here was, uh, was kind of like a pitfall trap, except the pit I'm not sure how to describe it. It was kind of dark and I only caught like the tail end of it. I just heard her yelp and then whoop up through the ceiling somehow. Who? Mm then came the real fucking That was uh, just everything in the room was just like awful. Like, you ever seen, like, those movies with, like, you know, the walls are made of, like, meat with, like, eyes and shit? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it started going that with, like, you know, wailing voices, faces of people I knew coming out. It was pretty terrible. <clears throat> and I don't even know how I managed to pick up hearing voices I recognized more immediately as in any gestures towards you know, the unconscious lizard, his sister, and Victoria heard these three, and I just started booking it. My head was like the best description I have for it is like my head was trying to split like a piece of firewood really fucking hurt <clears throat> yeah, was, like, mental attacks tend to do that they're not fun for that reason, among others. Mm hmm. Right, they're not. But I just started tearing through walls. Anything I could, really. He, like, suddenly materializes a cane and stands up and kind of leans on it. <coughs> Ugh. But eventually, <coughs> I found one of us. And I was on my last legs when I found him. And it was Marcus. So I just grabbed him by the face and just put something to maybe make him not be scared into his head. I don't know what happened after that. I just fell over and it was just awful. The awful. I woke up. He was on fire and yeah, you guys were here. <clears throat> oh, my best bet, knowing him, is seeing us in whatever state we were in while we were, you know, tripping balls on pure terror. <clears throat> uh, above all things, spun him into a dimension of pissed off, probably never before seen on this entire planet. That sounds like an app Because, uh... <laughs> I've heard a few things along the grapevine. I'm... Kind of, a, I'd like to think I'm a learned guy, kind of, but <clears throat> never heard in any, anything, like, not even, like, the oldest shit I've found that dates back to the creation of, like, you know, the, he looks at Orzal for a second, the things like, you know, your pokey stick there. <clears throat> never, ever heard of someone getting so mad or for any reason so emotional, they become a living embodiment of an element before. That's new. Yeah, I can't say I've heard of that either. <laughs> ne ne neither have I. If you want to see if you have, you can roll a history check. 
History, history, history. Fuck, my history's low. <laughs> history is low. As, yeah, history is low as she rolls a 22. <laughs> <laughs> well, 19 on the die, then Jack all trades plus her in. <laughs> and again, bards, yo. <clears throat> Giacchio. <clears throat> you've. <clears throat> The closest you've heard of Giacchio was of dragons being described as having the fury of an element personified. Such as, you know, uh, Jormagon being the wrath of the ocean if you stir him to fury. Right. And, you know, the other, like, the, the, the great, ten great dragons of the world is about the best you've got as, like, someone becoming elemental <laughs> like that. <clears throat> Padma, you're only slightly better. You've heard... It's like you, you didn't think of it until you... And they specifically mentioned the whole becoming the embodiment of an element. You... It was once and it was like a spitball theory that like some professor you knew back in the day was like going over ball half drunk. <laughs> he was a dwarf. <clears throat> Ah, half-drunk professors. They're so much fun. He had this crazy theory <clears throat> that if... that there were people with... You know, some people, like, just prefer different elemental spells or whatever. Like, just, like, there's just, you know, the pyromancers, the cryomancers, the geomancers, all that shit. There's people who prefer things. His spitball theory, well, you know fucking three shots deep into a bottle of vodka or the dwarven equivalent of it was <clears throat> he thought it was possible to if you were in some way an elemental ish creature so you know a ganasi a dragonborn uh, in some way like, shape or form you have a high affinity for a certain element or elements yeah, his his logic was exclusively people who in some way resist an element natively, like, you know, again, Genasi, yeah. Dragonborn, Tieflings. Is that if you had that spark deep enough in your being where you had that trait, you could embody that if you did something. He didn't know what, <clears throat> because he then spiraled into the total thought that because dwarves have such a good affinity for, you know, stone and metal that he could totally just like basically become metal mario <laughs> he wanted to and i quote as padma you recall him jumping onto the table and holding his tankard high because <laughs> he's also having like a few ales too and just like declaring himself steel beard the unbreaking <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny part after party <clears throat> You meet some interesting people, darling. <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs> That's, show That's show business. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> you see, I was like, I think I have a guy who knows that dwarf. I think. <laughs> Might be my uncle. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've, I've heard of a lot of... But then, well, there's a lot of really weird dwarves out there. It's entertaining. I think my favorite's the one who insists that he doesn't have a beard because he's got magnificent chest hair. <laughs> it migrated south for the winter. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, Rilla looks at Victoria. Can you see if thing we came here to break is gone? Because I'm currently assuming it was the thing that was just well. He, like, sort of looks in the direction of Marcus. Burninated. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, immolated's probably not quite the right word. No, it burned and annihilated, combined together, burninated, there you go. It was deleted from existence, there we go. That works, too. Deleted by fire. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no, just uh, control, delete, end task, there you go. Sickness must be purged. Maria <laughs> pulls out <clears throat> a little PDA thing and just starts checking on it and be a little surprised. 
According to this, yes, whatever the anomalous reading here was is gone now. I can't remember if we did that for the funhouse or not. If we got rid of the thing for the <coughs> funhouse. Well, you weren't in a position to check because by the time you probably would have, you heard scrims. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> what about the funhouse? We kind of cut our search a little short after hearing your screams. <laughs> Armin is like, listen, you're already leaving when we heard the screaming. Shh. <laughs> <clears throat> Victoria looks a little confused. Just kind of brushes one of her hair a little bit to one side because it's still a little messed up. And uh, those of you with the passive protection of 20 or better catch just the faintest glimpse of an absolutely destroyed right eye <laughs> just poking up from behind her eye patch. Oh dear. Like, you see scars that imply, like, there's nothing underneath of it. It's just there. I remake <clears throat> my mental note of that. Mm-hmm. Jeez, uh... The one in the fun house is... And she says it's, like, the... In, like, the most, uh, kind of way... Gone? Or... It... Move. Did you take anything out of there? I'm trying to remember. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we did. I don't remember what it was. <clears throat> you did. I think it was. The DM remembers this. Don't worry. Arvin took you something out a... of there, wasn't it? Yeah, you got a um, a rune stone after you finished dealing with the Gooky Grabble Gene, the very crazy frogman. Uh, and it's like about the size of a CD, just a big room covered rock. Yeah, Arvin pulled something out of there. Yeah, he <clears throat> fishes it out of his coat and holds it up. This. Victoria walks over and just like holds the PDA up to it a little bit. Tap, tap, tap. I think that's our way in. For lack of a better term, the readings giving off from this match those coming from the big top itself. So I would assume effectively you found the key. Oh, fun. <clears throat> On top of, well, can only assume dealing with whatever else was in the fun house as well along the way. Oh, yeah, it was a grand old time. Hmm. <clears throat> you see Roy like sort of hold up a hand like he's a kid in class like grand old time is in like actually grand or grand old time is in don't even fucking worry about it because you don't want to talk about it the latter. don't even worry about it <laughs> Roy finger guns while still holding the cane in one hand gotcha Let's just say I'm not going in a fun house for a very long time, if ever again. <clears throat> it was like, it's a shame, the one here was actually really nice back in the day. Well, it no longer has a hall of mirrors. Mm, 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 mm. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing, thank you. <laughs> Like has all the years. You're welcome. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, the shall we best probably best. get out of here? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Marcus. <clears throat> no, it was just me being like as far as I just imagined Snake like sliding into frame with like the Wiggler hat from Monhun World. You're welcome. To say that, <laughs> just because of the the crap guides to Monster Hunter and D and D. That's fitting enough. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but you were saying jinx i was just saying shall we get out of here then and proceed <laughs> most likely 
Victoria's like walks over to Marcus and beckons right. Come here, you. And he's oh no, might have to carry him. Victoria's like looks at him with a very deadpan expression. He's just like, Ugh. why can't you have her do it? She's actually strong. And he just like looks at him, you weenie. And he's like, look, just gestures to Marcus, who seven foot one, Alra looking motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, thinking him in a half deadpan, half angry expression, just hands at him like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Marcus has the Roy is second lowest strength here <laughs> among Dragon and Roy. <clears throat> and out of character, I'm trying to remember what else we needed to do now that we took care of the perimeter. The to quick refresher basically deal with funhouse the fucking um roller coaster terminal and freak show and then you can get into the big top you have done all three technically ah. because the mimic was part of the terminal and he's now been yeeted off this building yeah and it's quite likely mimic paced by now he's been mimic paced <clears throat> You know, it's hard to beat the power of Yeet 4. I mean, C4. Well, we're all going <clears throat> to the same place anyway. I'll help Roy carry fucking Marcus. <clears throat> well, like, Rhea, like, stopped you before I do one second. And just sort of picks up Marcus, like, sits him up a little bit, and then just, like, because she is monk, she just like slaps him across the face a few times. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> and she gets smacked by Victoria. Don't beat him up. <clears throat> I was like, Shiaki pulls have a out some smelling salts. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna try those first? Yeah. Let's try these smelling salts. I don't know if I actually have it in my inventory, but it's an inconsequential item, so I'm just gonna say I have it. I mean, given your. I think it's probably part of like your background, maybe, probably. Yeah, it's, and well, given it's somewhere in my professional class, kit. Yeah. Probably. Like, uh... Pops open a vial. <laughs> I'm not sure what to make you roll a check for for this, actually. Uh, this is medicine or survival. I'm not sure which seems worse. It would be medicine. medicine. Yeah, roll a medicine check. See if you can... 22. <laughs> Good <laughs> thing that crit fell was on the second die. Yep, yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Accidentally champs the spelling salt of piss. <laughs> you just poke him in the eye, he wakes up and punches you in the dick and passes back out. Oh no, I was gonna say he accidentally like shoves it in his nose or his mouth or something. Just shoves it up the nose, I'll get it in there. He, he, he up, trips up. as he's leaning forward and his hand just goes up. <laughs> just thump. And there's now just like a bottle of what looks like glue shoved up Marcus's nose. Yep. Yeah, yeah he no. just waves it under his nose. Yeah, you... <clears throat> you start, like, messing with it. You make sure you get it all good and good and stank ready to... Like, you you mix it up a little bit. Like, if, like, mm, that won't wake up anything. Keep trying, keep trying a few times. And you get like that, that sudden, like, burn whoosh smell. Like, your nostrils just cleared out from, like, everything for the last five years. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, when you get that, like, oh, yep, there we go. <laughs> you wave that under his nose and, like, like have Rhea, like, hit him in the chest to see to get him to breathe a little bit. And it does. He's not waking up. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Do I have to break right. out the bagpipes? <clears throat> or it's like, I have, let me try something first before you go to, you know, nuclear option. And just, like... <clears throat> You see him uh, <coughs> stab his cane into the ground, crack his knuckles, and like pull on his wrist, even though he's only wearing like um, bottom of gloves. And it's like all this magical energy like starts arcing around his hand. Just like, hey, Marcus! Grabs him, like reaches over the back of his head, grabs his face, and just like pumps something into him. Nothing. Where he's like, uh oh. Uh oh. Well, slapping, smelling salts, and whatever you did didn't work. This is, uh... Um, he holds up a hand. Let me try his hand. He's still holding Marcus's face, like, upside down. 
And like you see another pulse that you recognize as a healing spell. Hmm. Uh I think we might want to get him back to the evac point. In fact, hold on. Let me just roll this. Okay, good job, Roy. It's a hmm, yeah, no, he 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 knows what's up. That's a that's a natural twenty. Okay. <clears throat> what's going on? What's going on. You see, brothers like kind of shove his sister out of the way, like sort of op like open one of Mark's eyes, like check the pulse, few things, checks few other places. Uh, hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> you see this, and he like holds up Marcus's arm because he's wearing like a um, like a a short sleeve version of the Foe Striker coat, kind of. Or, well, he was, but it's one Victoria. So you just see, like, his, uh, it's like he's wearing basically a t shirt right now. Uh -huh. So you can see, like, you know, his, uh, from like his mid bicep down on his arm. You know, so there's a lot of, like, burned patches on his skin, like, second degree burns. Like, <clears throat> but my understanding of all the insanity that is the existence of my boss here, that shouldn't happen. Oh dear. Or at least if it does, um, takes a lot of fire. So I think there's more problems than just him having been in, in, incomprehensibly furious. So, uh, hey, he looks at Rhea. A little help getting him back to the thing, and then you can go help them punch dude in dick, probably. <clears throat> Rhea's like, yeah, yeah, and the two of them <clears throat> lift Marcus's, like, fucking 300-pound lizard ass off the ground. That's just his ass. I'd hate to see what the rest of him weighs. <laughs> so, like, they... Victoria, like, looks at Jacko. Wait for uh, Rhea to catch up at the big top. I'm gonna... Roy and I'll make sure he's, um, he gets there okay. She looks very concerned about her friend now. Because now that the, they've been pointed out, you see those third degree, those like second degree burns in a lot of places on him that are oh, visible. Oh Ooh, it's not is... just his like lower arms. You see a few on his tail even. And even there's like one on like his, uh, part of his face. It's it's really weird <laughs> and very bad. Yeah, I'd say that's not good. Well, I assume they have that handled. Yeah, no, and real catch up because she's a monk and can move at the speed of yeet. <laughs> So we're gonna map transition. And I need to Age. wait for dinner. Got well, I think I'm actually might end up just calling it here too because yeah. you guys are basically just gonna head to the big top here. Yeah. And you know, we'll we'll pick that up when there's more than half the party here. Yeah. <laughs> so this was a really short session. Yeah. There's a live letter to watch as well. So. Let's see. <clears throat> So uh, we'll, we'll catch people, uh, good people next time. Have fun. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to cut the stream for now because, like I said, I have to go for dinner. But I will be back, and we will be watching the live letter. So uh, that should be about half an hour, 40 minutes-ish. Uh, but until then, guys, peace.